Hey everyone, this is Dr. Uzzer with Integrative Kidney Institute. I hope everyone is doing great and uh, doing well in this uh, nice spring we're having. We're having great weather here in the Pacific Northwest. And uh, finally, I feel like the pandemic is uh, withering away. We're, we're seeing more and more, the, especially here in the United States, that the numbers are getting uh, better. So um, today I'm going to be talking to you about the clinical utility of genetic testing and kidney transplant evaluation. So let's do this. So we talked before about next generation sequencing, and I'll put the link here for you. We know that next generation sequencing has revolutionized the genetic testing for in general, and re revolutionize it for kidney disease particularly. With next generation sequencing, we could massively sequence millions of fragments of DNA simultaneously. And that can help us compare these results with a database that's available from the JWAS studies. And that really made this test really uh, a fast test, reduced sample size, and made it available and uh, less expensive than before. And that's as compared to the old fashioned Sanger's sequencing that really used to take time and a lot of work. So when we talk about transplant evaluation, we try to answer three major questions. And I, in full disclaimer here, I'm not a transplant nephrologist, but I understand the transplant evaluation in terms that we are trying to answer. The question is whether the recipient who has kidney disease is going to survive this elective transplant surgery per se. And the next question we're trying to see is whether the, the patient is going to be able to tolerate immune suppressive medication and he's going to take those immune suppressive medications. And the third question is whether the patient is going to have good outcome. And when you think about the donor, especially living uh, donors, we try to ask or answer these questions, plus the patient's ability to donate or the donor's ability to donate a kidney and their risk of developing kidney disease in the future. So when we think about genetic testing and kidney transplant evaluation, there are three major ways that genetic testing can help with kidney transplant evaluation. Number one is living donor evaluation. And number two, is recipient evaluation, and number three in pharmacogenomics, and we'll talk about those in details. So when you think about living donor evaluation, here we're trying to answer, will the donor who is giving the kidney is going to develop kidney disease in the future? Now, there are data that shows that donors have increased risk of developing kidney disease in the future. However, the risk is different depending on the donor. And the risk is higher if the donor and recipients are related. So this really points to the fact that there are genetic factors involved here. And in KDGO 2007 guidelines, they recommended that transplant programs should have a strategy for evaluating for inherited kidney diseases in donor candidates where, uh, when there is a family history of kidney disease and the recipient cause of kidney disease is uncertain. So this is a recommendation from KDGO. And they specifically mention specific kidney diseases that they recommend that these patients should have genetic evaluation. FSGS is one of them, atypical HUS, Alport syndrome, sickle cell trait, or zonal dominant tubular interstitial kidney disease. Now when we talk about polycystic kidney disease, it's also important to have genetic evaluation for those patients. We talked about that whether you have a truncated or non-truncated uh, mutation that can determine the outcome of, of the patient. However, think about a situation where you have a, a father, for example, who has polycystic kidney disease and ended up on dialysis, and his son is wanting to donate to his, uh, a kidney to his dad, but he's too young to have or show any cyst in his kidneys. So when you can do a genetic testing, you can see whether the patient, whether the son has these genetic um, mutations and whether they are 
a good candidate or not to donate a kidney to the dad. And finally, uh, testing for APOL1 gene variants, which has which is a variant that is associated with poor outcome and increased risk for developing kidney disease, especially in patients of African ancestry, can replace a race in the kidney donor risk index, which actually look at the potential outcome of the kidney transplant, and that involve uh, race evaluation. So when you use the APOL gene variants, you can probably potentially in the future replace race in that kidney donor risk index. Now, when you think about the recipient evaluation, we remember that kidney disease is a silent disease. And actually one in 10 people end up showing up needing dialysis with end-stage kidney disease, and they never knew that they have kidney disease. And when you try to work up these people, you end up frustrated because all the workup will be negative. And at the end, even a kidney biopsy does not show any results because usually it shows scar tissue. So genetic data can be informative even if the patient have end-stage kidney disease and the biopsy is not informative. Now, they actually had studied this and they targeted gene testing for patients under 40 and they found that they were able to identify the pathogenic mutation in 19% of weight-listed transplant patients who are under 40. And this is targeted gene testing. So if you think about broad panel genetic testing, you probably can have better yield. And genetic testing can also help you individualize post-transplant care. So if you see a patient who have a genetic disease that is localized to the kidneys, you can limit their evaluation and, and follow-up after transplant, while if you have a disease that can affect other organs, you will refer those patients for evaluation and follow up with other specialties. And finally, there's a consortium right now that is looking at genetic studies and outcome for transplant patients. So in the future, we're going to see more and more about these results, and we're going to learn more about that. And finally, pharmacogenomics. We talked about pharmacogenomics before, and pharmacogenomics in essence, help us predict in advance how someone might respond to a medication. So it can help you guide the dosage for the medication and help you avoid toxicity. For and there are right now pharmacogenomics data available for two medications that are used in kidney transplant, which one of them is tacrolimus or Prograf, and the other one is ezathioprine or Imuran. Now we don't use Ezathioprine or Imuran anymore or, or not as much, but Prograf for tacrolimus is used all the time still. And um, it is metabol metabolized by enzyme encoded in gene CYP3A5. And variants in this gene can classify the patient into extensive metabolizer, and those people will require higher dosage, intermediate metabolizer, or poor metabolizers who can require less of a dose. So by knowing the genetic profile of the patient ahead of time, it can guide you to individualize the dose for the patient and avoid also toxicity of prograf. Now, there are also other medications that are not necessarily immune suppressive medications that are utilized in kidney transplant patients, such as Plavix, Voriconazole, Aloperinol, and others that has pharmacogenomic data that can be used to individualize the dosage and avoid toxicity for these medications. So in essence, genetic testing is gradually becoming a significant part of kidney transplant evaluation of the donor and the recipient. And in the future, we're going to see more and more results about the outcome and link between genetic data and phenotypical and outcome data. So I hope you like this video. If you like it, please uh, follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Integrative Kidney and at Integrative Kidney Solutions on YouTube. Don't forget to uh, press the like button and share this video with the people who you think will benefit from it. And we're also always on www.inkidney.com.